All right, guys. So, I mean, look, there's no way to candy coat this. This is about as bad as it gets. If this storm even comes remotely close to where the Hurricane Center is forecasting, this is going to be one for the record books in the Bay Area. Let's go ahead and take this graphic full and let's go ahead and talk about it. So you may have heard on your phones the alerts a couple of minutes ago. That was a hurricane warning for the entire area. That means hurricane conditions are expected over the next 36 hours. There's nothing surprising about that. We knew that was going to happen. And there is now a storm surge warning, which is also expected because we've been talking about the storm surge possibility for days. So those are kind of the formalities. And that is where we are right now. OK, the time frame will be late Wednesday afternoon, Wednesday night into the overnight into early on Thursday. Storm surge. These are two separate issues that we're dealing with here. Remember, the most deadly of any weather phenomenon with a hurricane by far is the water. It is not the wind. It is not the tornadoes. It is not the flooding. It is the storm surge and these are the worst case scenarios. These are the numbers that the Hurricane Center releases and says this is the most reasonable worst case scenario. We had about seven or eight feet with Helene, so this is about three or four feet higher than that. Now, where exactly landfall occurs is very important because most of the surge is at that point or a little bit south as the winds go in. You look at this system and it's, I don't even have words to describe it. I mean, it is about as strong of a hurricane as you will ever see there have only been two in history that have been recorded higher in the Gulf. There was Felix and there was Wilma and Wilma, by the way, hit Florida late in the season as well. It hit Naples, if you remember. Both of those storms weakened before making landfall. This one will too, and I think there's going to be significant weakening. So we're going to look at that and we're going to see these numbers and Everybody is absolutely just scared to death from this, as we should be. If you get a 180 mile an hour wind storm coming in, I don't even know what to say. It's never happened and it's not going to happen this time either. What is going to happen is as this storm moves north, it is going to run into negative impacts and it's going to weaken. How much it weakens varies from model to model. The Hurricane Center brings it from a five now down to a three at 120, 120 miles an hour, 120, 125. It should be noted, this is a very small storm, like Andrew was a very small storm. Remember with Andrew, Homestead, I mean, a five mile area got absolutely just devastated from damage, but you get 10, 15 miles out, you didn't have much. This wind field is going to be the same. You're gonna have a smaller area where winds are gonna probably be 110, 115, maybe 120. So cat three and then everybody else is going to see winds closer to 90 to 100. Powerful winds. Trees will come down. There will be issues. But what we're looking at right now cannot maintain itself. It's just not possible. And I'm not saying wishful thinking. Meteorologically speaking, it it's never happened before. I can't even imagine it would happen this time. There's way too many things going against it. So overall, Rainfall. We're going to get ourselves five to seven inches of rain. That's probably the least of our worries in many spots. There might be some as much as 10, but there will be some freshwater flooding just due to how much rain we have coming. Winds on Wednesday, tropical storm force winds in the morning. This is in the afternoon into the evening, 50 to 60 mile an hour winds. And then the storm, this particular model pretty much brings it right into Tampa Bay with winds of 80 to 90 miles an hour. This model is a little more bullish on that shear weakening it, weakening it. We will see how that plays out. That is certainly a possibility, and that would be great if it plays out that way. There's no doubt we will all have tropical storm force winds and looking at the wind field, the hurricane winds again right there. There's your tropical storm force winds in the yellow. This is as of the five o'clock advisory. So on Wednesday afternoon, tropical storm force winds by Wednesday evening, the heavier winds come in 58 to 73. These are gusts, by the way, not sustained. And then once it moves on shore in the overnight, it will start to weaken. So there will be, I repeat, a small area that is going to create just really terrible conditions. And obviously power outages are going to be widespread. You take a look. Wednesday afternoon isolated by Wednesday evening when the winds really start to come in. They're going to be more widespread and they'll continue to be widespread Thursday into Thursday night. It's probably strongest along the coast where landfall 
will occur. And as you see through the overnight and into Thursday, you got to figure there will be widespread power outages that are going to last, as the mayor of St. Pete said, not just for days, but potentially for weeks. So there it is. Storm surge up to 12 feet. Worst case scenario in some spots. Rainfall 4 to 12 inches and wind gusts for most areas 80 to 90 miles an hour inland especially. But in that smaller area along the coast, five to seven miles is where more of the extreme winds will be and where that spot is. We just don't know yet. Stay tuned. We'll continue to track it right on through the overnight and for that matter, right on through the rest of the week.